Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion. This video today is about molecular diffusion and this is part of the course heat and mass transfer. Um, this is the general content of my presentation. We're gonna go over a brief introduction about molecular diffusion, uh, the meaning of the diffusion coefficient. And then we're gonna take a um, few examples. So we're gonna go over a few examples. The case of the determination of the diffusion coefficient in, if we have gases, or liquid. We're also going to study the particular case of the diffusivity in pores. So when we have a very porous material that we'll see a specific equations to calculate the diffusion coefficient. And finally, very briefly, because it's not that important when we have solids, how we can calculate the diffusion coefficient. And finally, as to Marie. So if you remember, if you remember from previous lectures, we discussed how we have two different modes of transport. One is the molecular diffusion, and we use the analogy with the heat transfer conduction. And the chapters dealing with molecular diffusions are chapters from 24 to 27 in your textbook. And second, we have a second mode of transport, which is convective mass transfer, that is somehow uh, it's related, it's an analogy with the heat transfer convection. So for now, we are focusing on molecular diffusion. And actually, that's what we discussed in, in the previous lecture when we talk about the introduction to mass transfer. So today, uh, we're going to focus on the determination of the diffusion coefficient. If you remember this equation from last, uh, the previous, uh, previous video, we defined the fixed rate equation, the molar flux of the element A, is a function of the um, diffusion coefficient. And in this case, the gradient of the concentration of the element A plus another term, which we call the bulk motion, when, where we also consider the presence of other elements. So this is a general equation for diffusion. And every time, uh, if we want to calculate the molar flux related to diffusion, there is some diffusion coefficient involved. We will always need to have this value of the diffusion coefficient. And as I mentioned, we're going to see different uh, situations here when we have gases, liquids, solids, and a particular case when we have a porous, so a, a very porous material. Okay. So what is the diffusion coefficient? Well, the diffusion coefficient is at fundamental dimensions. Um, unlike other uh, fundamental di the dimensions in transfer properties, the units usually is length square over time. So if you remember when we study heat transfer, we define this thermal diffusivity, and it was an important part of the equation governing heat transfer. If you remember from previous courses in, uh, trans in transport um, transfer, you also studied the momentum diffusivity. So this diffusion coefficient is a fundamental uh, dimension similar to the ones used in the momentum transfer and the heat transfer. It depends on pressure, the temperature, and the composition. And in your textbook, let me see what it is. In your textbook, if you look to Appendix J, I'll show you in a minute. OK, here it is. You can see here the, a table with different values of mass transfer diffusion coefficient in binary system. What's the different, the main difference, uh, the main difference between the diffusion coefficient in mass transfer and the thermal diffusivity in heat transfer. If you remember the thermal diffusivity, you can also use the appendix, one of the appendix in your textbook. And there was a table. You take a look to the material. And as a function of the temperature, you can find a different value of the thermal diffusivity. The diffusion coefficient depends on the presence of all the elements in the mixture. It doesn't only depend on the element that we are calculating the diffusion coefficient uh, for. Uh, that means that you also have to consider the presence of other elements. So in this case, in this table, we have some examples of binary systems. So you have to look for air, for example, 
and then the second element. And as you can see, well, as you can imagine, that makes things a little bit more complicated. And actually, we don't have a lot of um, diffusion coefficients tabulated or, or listed in this table. That's why, well, if you have to solve a problem and you need to know the value of the diffusion coefficient, of course, first, try to find the, if it's a binary system, trying to find the values in this table. But in most cases, you will have to determine or calculate the value for the diffusion coefficient. And for that, we're going to define a number of semi-empirical equations to calculate the diffusion coefficient. Um, very quickly here, just to give you a, a sense of scale, and I think we discussed this in previous lecture. In the case of gases, the diffusion coefficient is usually higher than in the case of liquids, and especially in the case of solids. Okay, so um, usually in gases, you will have a value about 10 rise to minus 6 and 10 power minus 5 in the range, and for liquids, as I mentioned, uh, lower than that, and so for solids, the efficient coefficient is very, very small. So let's begin now with the analysis of the diffusion coefficient in the case of gases. As I just mentioned a few minutes ago, first, try to find the values in the tables in the appendix J. Okay, that would be the easiest way to get an estimation of the diffusion coefficient. But if the binary system that you are analyzing or you are using in your problem is not in the table, you need to calculate it. And uh, we, we're going to see two main equations to do that. This is the first one. So the diffusion coefficient of the element A through B, in the case of gases, is equal to a constant times the temperature rise to 3 half over the uh, absolute pressure and over two new parameters. This one is the collision diameter or the Lerner Jones parameter, and you can find the value in the appendix K. I will give you more information in a minute. And a second term, omega, which is the collision integral that you can also calculate in appendix K. These will be multiplied by one over the molecular weight of the element A and one over the molecular weight of the element B. In the case of gases, very important, the diffusivity of A through B is the same as the diffusivity of B through A. So if you calculated already the diffusivity of ammonia in air, it will be the same as the diffusivity of air in ammonia. This doesn't happen in the case of liquids, for example. So if you have a binary system, and, and if you know to calculate the diffusivity of A and B and the diffusivity B through A, you will have to calculate these two numbers uh, in a separate way. Okay. From this expression here, we also get two important conclusions or a very important piece of information. The diffusivity coefficient is uh, proportional to the inverse of the pressure, and the, diffus the diffusion coefficient is proportional to the temperature rise to 3 half. Okay? And again, that's very important because if you have, for example, if you know the value of the diffusion coefficient at 300K, for example, 300 Kelvin, and in your problem, the operating conditions is 600 K, 600 Kelvin, you just need to use this relationship to calculate the new diffusion coefficient at the 600 uh, Kelvin level, okay? Um, one important uh, thing that I want to mention, if you use this value for the constant, then the units will be a square meter per second. If you use this other value, then, I mean, it's exactly the same. It's just uh, the conversion of units. Uh, in this case, if you use this equation for this particular uh, value of the, of the constant, then the unit of the diffusion coefficient will be centimeters squared over seconds, okay, over time, okay? <clears throat> 
and the rest is exactly the same. Um, I mentioned that I will explain you a little bit more in detail about this Leonard Jones molecular diameter of the element A and this omega, which is the collision integral for molecular diffusion. Uh, two different ways to calculate these two new parameters. One is just by uh, going to the appendix K2 and look for the values of the sigma of the element A and sigma of the element B. Okay, and with that, you will have the value of the Leonard Jones molecular diameter uh, that you need to incorporate it in this uh, equation here. And for the omega, it's a function of the Boltzmann constant, the temperature, and a new parameter that is called the energy of molecular interaction of the binary system A and B. So um, if you, well, we also know that this parameter, the energy of molecular interaction, is equal to a square root of the epsilon A and epsilon B. And you can find the values of the epsilon A and B in the appendix K1, okay? Usually you, well, you will be able to calculate everything from the table and with that, you will get the value of the collision integral, this omega, that you can incorporate in the equation, okay? Okay, that's one way to get the values of the sigma and omega that you need to calculate the diffusion coefficient. There is another way. Uh, when, if you can't find the values that you need in the appendix K, you have to have some other information uh, in order to calculate these two parameters that you need. If you are given the molecular volume at the normal boiling point or the critical molecular volume, of the critical temperature or the normal boiling temperature and the critical pressure, you can use one of these three expressions here, as you can see as a function of the molecular volume at the normal boiling point in the corresponding units, the critical molecular volume, and here is the relationship between the critical temperature and the critical pressure. Okay, so this is a second strategy to calculate the parameter sigma and to calculate this parameter here as a function of the uh, normal boiling temperature or the critical temperature. So either you have all the information in the appendix K that you need to calculate the sigma and omega, or you have some information about the critical temperature or the critical molecular volume. Okay? Okay, so this is Equation number one. And for gases, we have another equation, which is this one based on the atom volume. So the diffusion coefficient is um, defined as a function of a, of a constant, a function of the temperature. Here again, a function of the molecular weight. And the main difference is that here, we use the parameters, the atom volume. So when the Leonard Jones parameters are not available, so you don't have any information in the appendix K and you don't have any information regarding the critical temperature or the critical volume, then you have a table in your textbook, actually this table, with uh, information about the um, atomic and structural diffusion volume increments. So this is exactly what you need here, the diffusion uh, for the element A, the volume on the element B. Okay, and these are for the main elements. So if you are working with hydrogen, for example, well, you have the diffusion volumes for the hydrogen uh, case. Uh, the same for air, uh, the same for ammonia, for example. So if you need to calculate how ammonia is diffusing through air, you go to this table, you have here the diffusion volumes of air, diffusion volumes of the uh, ammonia, and with that information, you can directly calculate the diffusion coefficient of ammonia through air. 
Okay, so this is, as I mentioned, a second strategy. In the case of gases, we're gonna see this expression here and the, the expression that I just mentioned. So two different equations. It should be equivalent. So you should have similar values when you apply uh, these two equations. Okay, um, now, um, well, you can see these two equations here are related to a binary system, right? So when we have two different components, A and B. What happens if we have more than two components, if we have multi-component mixture? Well, in this case, we have to define the diffusion coefficient of the element one or the element A with respect to the mixture, okay? And this is equal to the molar fraction of the element two or the element B over the diffusion coefficient of the element one through two. If we have three elements, then we will have to incorporate the molar fraction of the element three in the mixture divided by the diffusion coefficient of the element one through the element three plus blah, 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 uh, until n uh, elements, if there is n elements in the mixture. So as you can see here, we will have to calculate the diffusion coefficient of the element one through two the diffusion coefficient of the element one through three, and in general, the diffusion coefficient of the element one through n. So for each of the components in the mixture, we will have to determine the value of the diffusion coefficient. And then we will have to incorporate, or we have to use as well, the molar fraction in order to calculate the global diffusion coefficient of the element one through the mixture. And this molar fraction is defined as the molar fraction of the element in the mixture divided by one minus the molar fraction of the element one, being one, the element that we are calculating the diffusion coefficient. Okay? I think we have an example about this and hopefully it will be much clearer once you see an example, the different concepts that we are using. Okay, so this is one example that I would like you to try. Um, is you can find the solution also in the, I mean, there is a video with the solution and the solution is also posted. But nevertheless, I would like you to try first and then, you know, you can, if, well, if, if you don't understand what you have to do, then you can take a, a bit to the solution. So the, um, the example that I would like you to work on is when we have a gas separation process that has been proposed to remove selectively two pollutants. So the element A is the hydrogen sulfide and the element B is the sulfur dioxide. And we need to um, separate these components from an exhaust gas streaming containing 3% molar of hydro hydrogen sulfide and 5% molar of sulfur dioxide. And the rest is nitrogen. So there are three components, hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen. Uh, we also have the operating conditions, so the temperature is 350 Kelvin and the total pressure is one atmosphere. So first, you need to determine the total molar concentration, uh, the molar concentration of hydrogen sulfide and the mass concentration of hydrogen sulfide. Then you need, you need to estimate the molecular diffusion of the element of the hydrogen sulfide in nitrogen, only in nitrogen, okay, not through the mixture, only in nitrogen. And for that, the critical temperature of the sulfide, hydrogen sulfide is given, uh, both the critical temperature and the critical volume, okay? And the third section is related to the molecular diffusion coefficient of the hydrogen sulfide in the gas mixture. This is what we just discussed a few minutes ago, okay? So the molecular diffusion of the element one through the mixture. 
And well, you have to also make some discussion that this is diffusion coefficient different than the diffusion coefficient for the binary hydrogen sulfide uh, in nitrogen. Okay. And um, yeah, what else? Yeah, this 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 is given the critical temperature and the critical gain. So uh, the first thing that you have to do, to do here is to identify the different elements. I mentioned already that there are three different elements. You can call uh, A, B, C, or one, two, three. And with that, you need to determine the values of the molecular diffusion of the element uh, hydrogen sulfide in, into nitrogen and also the hydrogen sulfide in the gas mixture. So try to try to solve it. And as I mentioned, the solution is posted. OK. OK, good. Let me go over very quickly now what will be the diffusion coefficient in the case of liquids. And I mentioned different examples when we discussed the introduction to mass transfer. In the case of liquids, um, well, it's also very common in industry, um, in biological process processes, but also in chemical plants. This is a typical absorption process with BE. That means that there is liquids involved. And this is a very typical absorption column where you want to purify uh, gas, for example. So you, um, well, you make the gas go through uh, some materials and liquid. Uh, usually you put this liquid as a, in a shower and here the liquid is able to absorb the pollutant that you want to remove. For example, if you want to capture CO2, you will put a concentration with relatively high concentration of CO2. You make this gas go through this absorption column and you put this gas in contact with a liquid, usually amines, which is a, well, a chemical. And as a result, the amines is able to absorb using diffusion um, the CO2 and the, and the clean gas is finally uh, obtained uh, at the outlet of this absorption process. So again, this is also a very, very common practice in industry to have this kind of equipment. If we want to calculate the diffusion coefficient, there are also two different equations that we're going to use. One is the Stokes-Einstein where the diffusivity of the element A through B is equal to the uh, constant um, as a function of the molecular radius of the element A and the solvent viscosity. And you have a table in your textbook to make an estimation of the molecular volume and all the information that you need here. And the second one, if you want to use another expression, the Wilkie Chan, then the diffusivity is a function of the association parameter here and the molecular volume. And as I mentioned, you have the information that you need about these parameters. There is a table in your textbook where you can calculate the value of the molecular volume, for example. An important difference when it comes to liquids is that the diffusivity of the, or the diffusion coefficient of the element A through B is not the same as the diffusion coefficient of the element A through A. Okay, so you will have to calculate both if you need it. And another difference between gases and liquid is that in the case of gases, the diffusion coefficient is directly proportional to the temperature. There is no any power that, that you need to calculate or you need to apply to the temperature. It's directly proportional to the temperature. OK, and this is a table that I mentioned that is in your textbook to calculate the molecular volume. And you have this uh, table for different compounds or different chemicals very used in, in industry. OK, so um, just to zoom out a little bit, because uh, it's very common as well when you are solving a problem Sometimes you're given the value of the diffusion coefficient under certain operating conditions, but in your problem, the operating conditions are different. So how can you avoid calculating 
using the big equation, the new diffusion coefficient? Well, you can simplify or you can find a relationship between the diffusion coefficient under temperature two and pressure two as a function of the diffusion coefficient under the uh, operating conditions T1 and P1. And how? Well, if you multiply by the ratio between the pressures and the ratio between the temperatures, you should be able to calculate this diffusion coefficient under the new operating conditions. Pay attention to this equation here. This is P1 over P2, and this is T2 over T1, okay? So it's the opposite. The temperature and the pressure pre plays like an opposite effect, okay? In the case of liquids, well, in the case of liquids, um, it, we only need to consider the temperature because, you know, in the, the effect of pressure in liquids is less significant than in gases. So we don't have to worry about the temperature, uh, about the pressure, sorry, mainly about the temperature, how the temperature affects the new coefficient. And if the solvent viscosity, if, if delta T is significant, we will see a change in the solvent viscosity as well. If delta T is not that significant, we can forget about the effect of the temperature over the solvent viscosity, okay? And in this case, well, we will only have to consider the, sorry, because I canceled this, uh, we will only have to consider the ratio between T1 and T2. And here again, these are the conditions, uh, the old conditions divided by the, I mean, the old coefficient divided by the old conditions. And here is the new diffusion coefficient divided by the new operating conditions. So if you have to apply this equation, please do not mix the, um, what is old and what is new, okay? Okay, I think we're gonna uh, take a break here and I'm gonna continue in the next video focusing on the diffusivity in porous material. Okay, thank you so much.